Hello and welcome to a quick cold and dark startup tutorial for the BMDG 777. This is going to be a very basic tutorial and it's just going to show you how to set up the aircraft for flight starting from cold and dark. It's not going to be something very in-depth so please bear that in mind and I'm not claiming that I'm doing everything right so uh, just uh, keep that in mind. And um, First of all, one uh, important piece of advice is for you to really read through the intro document that comes with your PMDG 777. Really do read through it because it gives you a lot of information that you need for setting up the aircraft, for setting up FSX for the aircraft. So do read through that document. It's really mandatory information. Um, when I load the BMDG uh, add-ons, I always load the default Cessna first. You don't have to do that. The PMDG manual says that you don't have to do it. I do it. Just uh, decide for yourself. So when you load up the PMDG 777, it gives you the aircraft like this with running engines and everything. Uh, I'm standing here at Vienna. I'm going to program the aircraft for a short flight from Vienna to Zurich with not many waypoints, just a basic setup. And so, first thing we do is we switch to the cockpit and we're going to uh, get the FMC open. You can do that by just clicking here with the uh, magnifying glass or pressing shift 1, shift 2 or shift 3 which gives you one of the FMC's. I'm going to use shift 2 here. So first thing you do is you go to FS Actions and you, uh, I'm sorry, you go to PNDG Setup and you do the panel state load and just select the 777 cold and dark and execute. So this will load up the airplane cold and dark. You can see that there's a countdown now um, in the upper left corner of the screen. Just let that finish. Don't press anything. Don't do anything till that countdown is finished because it sets up the aircraft as cold and dark. Very well. That was just a AES services. Um, so we now have the aircraft cold and dark. And um, first thing we'll do is uh, we'll go to the overhead panel and switch on battery power and next we'll right click on the APU switch switch it to on and another right click start the APU start sequence is absolutely realistic as is the whole airplane so it takes a few minutes for the airplane to start up so uh, in the meantime I will um, um, make a short break here and wait for everything to start up. You will hear a lot of sounds and a lot of screens flash and warning uh, warning uh, bells and that just means that the aircraft is starting up. So I'm going to make a short break here. Okay, so you can hear the warning bells now ringing and you can see that the displays just uh, came online and at the status page you can see that certain systems are now powering up and everything. So first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to load up the aircraft. You don't have to do this, but you can do this. So you can go to the FS Actions page at the FMC and uh, you can um, fill in your fuel here. I'm going to put in a fantasy number here. Just 30 tons. You can see the aircraft bumping a little bit because it changes the load. And you can put in a certain payload, passengers, cargo, everything. I'm going just, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, so I'm going to leave the FMC now once again. And we next thing to do is switch on the ADIRU. Uh, I'm sorry, ADIRU, and um, wait for that to align. Oh, wait, wait a minute, just uh, go to the overhead again and switch on the emergency lights or arm them and switch on the fasten seat belts. Okay, so next thing we'll do is we'll go back to the FMC and we'll go to the position in it page so that the systems can align themselves to the uh, current position. 
reference airport would be Vienna for now and now you can see that set inertial position is active and we'll just put in the GPS that's the current position of the aircraft. Next go to the route page and uh, I'm going to do the programming for a short flight going from Vienna to Zurich activated and executed. Now the next thing is at the initialization page you can now put in the cruise altitude which is going to be 33,000 feet for now, cost index I'm going to put in 35 for now and zero fuel weight the aircraft calculates that for itself just uh, do a left click here and you can fill it in and reserves would be uh, two tons for now. Next thing just uh, click on the departure button and uh, departure in Vienna we're going to use the runway 11 for now depending on the wind you have and the first waypoint will be Sydney so we're using this departure and back to the arrival and departure page we're going to use the ILS 228 in Zurich with a Negra 1A arrival and a, a Miki transition so that's all in the legs page right now just get rid of this route discontinuity by selecting the waypoint and putting it in here and everything's fine so this is just a basic route you can pretty much um, for example, I can uh, just uh, put in Salzburg uh, as a waypoint here, just fill it in here, and it's a uh, Salzburg um, VOR, select that one and uh, get rid of the root discontinuity. I cannot, which is weird, wait a minute, actually that should work. or just get rid of that. So you can see you can put in the the waypoints. Um, I'm not going to cover this in this tutorial. Now I'm activating route and executing it and I'm again going to the takeoff to the um, whenever you click on in initialization uh, you can also click on index and you have all the pages here. We are going to use the takeoff page now. We're going to use flaps 5 then the trim you can just left click here it puts in a number here and does the trim calculations for you. So the trim will be 2.5 .5, and we're going to set that later as soon as we have hydraulic power but for now we're just going to confirm the V speeds. Very well, we're already very advanced uh, right now so um, next thing to do is switch to the overhead panel and switch on both packs and on the main panel switch the auto brake button to rejected takeoff. Uh, next thing go back to the overhead panel and switch on the hydraulic systems in this order first the right electric uh, demand pump to auto then the C1 and C2 electric primary then the left electric demand pump auto and finally the two air C1 and C2 um, to auto. So this means we now have hydraulic power. We'll now switch to the flight control page here. I'm going to um, make it big for you. So I'm going to set the trim right now to 2.5 or approximately 2.5. Sometimes you can't just put it exactly, but that's fine. 2.49 and um, I forgot to switch on the beacon and uh, I'm going to switch the lights on as well. Now I'm going to switch on the fuel pumps. I'll only switch on the wing pumps because I only have fuel in the wing tanks so depending on the fuel load you have to switch on the center pumps as well. Um, next thing to do is I'm going to 
prepared a position for departure you don't have to do that I'm going to do it because I'm using AES uh, services so prepare position now for departure yes I need pushback and nose to right so you can see the passenger bridge is now disconnecting and I'm going to the FMC once again to the menu FS actions doors and close the entry wait for it to close and then arm the door perfect so we're ready for pushback now uh, concerning pushback you can use the built-in pushback from FSX you can use like I do the AES config uh, AES services pushback or the ground services X pushback or the PNDG 777 has a pushback uh, of herself so when you are at the FS actions page you can go to the pushback and you can see the wheel chocks are uh, still in place you can either remove them here or you can uh, ground connections remove them here I'm going to move them here now set the parking brake again and um, that's it that's it pretty much for now so let's go back to the takeoff page you can see the v2 is 150 and I'm going to put in v2 plus 15 now in the uh, MCP that's 165 I'm going to put in the uh, runway heading which is 11 or 110 I know that's not exactly the heading but I'm just going to put in that now and let's say that ADC already cleared us for 5,000 feet so that's going to be the initial climb now you have to switch on the f both flight directors and you can already arm LNAV and VNAV perfect last thing to do is set uh, the barrel me um, the barrel for the uh, for the airport uh, value so I'm just going to look up the current weather in Vienna but I'm I think I'm not using realistic weather so this could be wrong QNH okay let's see if this is correct no it's not so I think you can press B, yeah, you can press B, that's the default FSX option for the uh, calibration. So just uh, press B or just put it in yourself. Fine, so we're ready for pushback now. I'm going to start that right now. You can see that we're ready, so I'm going to release the parking brake. Pushback starts, and when you hear the guy saying that we're clear for engine starts you can start the engines or if you don't have any services running you can just start them I'm going to hide the yoke a little bit okay just go to the overhead here and switch on whichever engine you prefer first to start and go down to the fuel control switch and switch to on you can see that the engine now spools up and starts up very well so as soon we, we didn't um, switch uh, squawk code yet so I'm going to put in a standard code and switch to T A R A okay and as soon as the start switch returns to normal you can start the second engine just go down here fuel control switch to run and you heard now that this caution um, that a warning uh, bell rang and the caution light comes up and there's no status message and there's uh, you cannot click it away so that's I've already read through the the boards and everything and that's a known bug at the moment 
PMDG is planning to fix that in one of the next hot fixes so don't mind that you can bypass this bug by uh, not selecting cold and dark state but selecting short haul medium or long haul state which is also giving you a partially powered down airplane so you can either bypass this bug or just wait for the hot fix so don't mind the caution line right now okay um, this pretty much um, concludes this tutorial. I'm just going to switch off the APU right now and um, select flaps 5. And you can do the flight control check now, but you are pretty much ready for taxi and ready for a short flight. So I'm hope. I hope that this tutorial helped you. Um, you can uh, go into depth of this uh, very, very complex airplane with all the manuals, with the uh, with the um, huge manuals that PMDG uh, delivered with the add-on. So I just wanted to give you something to start at, and you can pretty much go anywhere from here. So I'm wishing you. Um, very much uh, I'm wishing you all the fun you can have with this airplane because it is a magnificent airplane it is a magnificent add-on for FSX so have fun with it and till next time happy landings <laughs>